guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Homeowner Association wanted to sue me because of my children's treehouse and forced me to tear it down. TLDR. Head of the Homeowner Association didn't let me keep a treehouse that I built with my kids. Threatens to sue me if I don't take it down right away. I comply and make sure that all of the other violations of her friends are reported as well. Then I built a bigger one that she couldn't do anything about. Revenge sometimes is better than what we originally had. So, like everyone else with kids during lockdown I was trying to keep them happy and entertained. One good thing about being a contractor is that I know my way around wood. Since jobs for me were obviously slow during the pandemic I decided to take my kids into the yard and help them build a treehouse. Now we don't have many trees in the yard to pick from, and since my kids are still rather young being ages 7 and 9, I wanted to make sure things would be safe for them. So, we picked out of the smaller trees and the treehouse was probably only 7 feet off the ground. For them though it was amazing. It was also a great teaching experience on how to build and work with tools safely. I would let them do small portions of it and supervise. It was honestly one of the only good weeks during the entire pandemic. I ever let my kids pick the colors that they wanted to paint it. And while a green and purple treehouse kind of looked like a disaster the kids loved it and that's all that mattered. It was a really good way for the two of them to get out of the house and away from the electronics for a while since they didn't have their usual activities. When restrictions started to lift, and they saw friends from the neighborhood the treehouse became a huge hit. Though there was clearly someone that wasn't too happy about the treehouse and unfortunately, I don't think that I will ever find out who that person is. They complained to the homeowner association that building the treehouse went against the guidelines and that it needed to be taken down. While there was nothing specifically about treehouses it talked about sizing and height of external structures. Still, I wanted to go and talk to the head of the homeowner association to see if they could let it slide. Besides it being different circumstances there were all sorts of violations that the homeowner association seemed to just ignore. Although nobody said it directly it was clear that the people who were friends of the WA head got away with doing anything they wanted while others had complaints made against them. If it wasn't for the fact the treehouse made the kids so happy, I probably wouldn't have tried. Me. Can I talk to you about this notice I got in the mail? Head of Homeowner Association. Oh yes you are the one at, address, that built the exterior structure I got a complaint about. Me. Yes, the structure though is a treehouse and my kids and others have really been enjoying it while they can't do much else. I was wondering if the Homeowner Association could let it slide until more things open up for the kids to do. Head of Homeowner Association. Once a complaint it made there is nothing I can do. You need to remove that monstrosity it or a fine will be issued. Me. Well, how much would the fine end up costing me if I decide to leave the treehouse up for a few more months? I was willing to spend the money on a stupid Homeowner Association fine if it meant that I got to keep my children happy. Head of Homeowner Association. If you are refusing to take it down then not only will you face severe fines, but I will take you to court. I can tell by her tone and word choice that she was probably the one that complained. Now looking back, I wish that I could have thought of something better to say or a good retort. Like most people I think of those things hours later when it's useless. Instead, I roll over, knowing that I can't afford to get sued right now with less contracting jobs. So, I explained to my kids that unfortunately we have to now take the treehouse down. They were disappointed, but when they learned about the destruction process, they were thrilled to help. The only thing kids like more than building something is destroying it. While I tried alternatives like building a semi-permanent pillow and blanket fort in the basement, nothing came close to that treehouse. I stewed in anger for a long time before realizing that the best way to beat this woman was to play by her own horrible rules. So, I started walking around the neighborhood with a clipboard and started to take notes that would help create my pure revenge. I made sure to take note of her friends' houses and mark every single thing that goes even slightly against the homeowner association regulations. When I get home, I draft letter after letter pointing out the exact problems and making sure to writing multiple times in each letter that what I am making is an official complaint to the homeowner association. 
I sent those out priority mail so she would have to sign and acknowledge that she got each and every one. In the end she had no choice but to force all of her friends to fix the violations that she had let slide for so many years. Most of this consisted of needing to remove things or spend money to fix broken fences and overgrown bushes. The next time I saw her I made sure to give her a big smile and wave, telling her that the neighborhood looked better than ever. She would just scowl in response, but it still didn't seem like enough revenge for me. That's when the second part of my revenge came into play. In our neighborhood we had an empty lot that the town was trying to fix up to be sort of a park. Since this area was not a home it wasn't regulated by the homeowner association and instead the town itself. The head of the homeowner association though was trying to get the town to turn it into a little garden area that her and her friends could hang out in. I had a much better idea and called the town up with my own suggestion. I told them that I wanted to build a treehouse for all the kids in the neighborhood to play in and it would only cost them for the raw materials. They were thrilled and soon I was back in the treehouse building business, only this time bigger and better. I wasn't an expert, but I like to think I made something that all the kids could enjoy, and I made sure that I painted it purple and green. The kids loved it, but the head of the homeowner association was furious. Head of homeowner association. I thought I told you that I would sue you for making that thing in my neighborhood. I was waiting for this moment and smiled as large as I could. Me. Actually, this area doesn't fall under the homeowner association, just the town. I checked with them, and they agreed that a treehouse and play area for kids is just what this neighborhood needed. You can feel free to call them and double check anything you want. Head of homeowner association. You can't do this without my permission. It's my neighborhood. Me. Actually, the neighborhood belongs to all of us, including the children. I walked off leaving her there with no idea what she could even say. To think that if she just agreed to let the treehouse slide for a few months like she did so many other things I wouldn't have had to get revenge. Now she will have to hang out inside with her friends and the kids can finally be outside and get some fresh air safely. I admit that I probably could have handled things better, I didn't want to let anyone tell me what I could do when it came to my children. The next story is titled. Entitled Mom Ruins Park Property and Gets Karma for It. So, starting off by saying this happened to a friend of mine. They told me the story and I suggested they submit it to r slash entitled parents, but they didn't want to write it all up and make an account. I offered to paraphrase and write it up since it's a pretty great one and they said sure. M is entitled mom and me is my friend. I used to do part-time volunteer work for a local park. It was pretty basic stuff like picking up trash and light security which was just making sure that people aren't damaging the park property or to report anything shady going on. This park was a fairly big and had a jungle gym in the back of it behind the wall of trees. One day, I noticed that there are tire marks in the grass right where a turn out of the back is. It's fairly easy to make that turn and doesn't come out of nowhere or anything, so I don't know why someone would go through the grass. Also keep in mind it was very muddy and cold, so the tire marks were pretty much cemented in after the grass was ran over. I call my supervisor and they say that we will fix that area when it gets a little warmer out which it was going to be later that week. A couple days later when I am near the front of the park patrolling, I notice a minivan coming up from the back of the park. It goes right through the same area of the grass that was previously ran over. I couldn't believe I just witnessed it happen. The turn doesn't come out of nowhere and you can clearly see that going straight out will take you through the grass. I start jogging towards the van waving my arms to get the driver's attention. She stops and rolls down her window, wearing thick sunglasses and looked at me confused at first. She also had two kids in the back. M. What? Me. Excuse me miss, I'm one of the park workers. You drove straight through the grass back there. With how muddy it is right there, the grass gets damaged very easily. M. Okay. She clearly didn't care and shocked me a bit that she didn't apologize about it. Me. Well, the grass is going to need to be put back down. I understand if it was a mistake, but please be more careful when coming out from the back. I can tell she's giving me a dirty look, even with her giant sunglasses covering most of her face. M. Whatever. She says rudely and drives out towards the entrance after I say thanks and back away from the van. Fast forward a couple days, me and my supervisor had finished flattening the dirt and putting down new seed for that area in the morning. I was pretty happy with how it turned out and the grass would look better than it did before once it grew. Later that day when I come back to patrol the park, I notice the same minivan in the back parking lot. 
I head over to the jungle gym area and of course I see the entitled mom on a bench looking at her phone while her kids are playing. I was hoping in the back of my mind that she would have listened to me yesterday but judging from how she acted I was doubtful. I did a couple walks around the back area, making sure there wasn't any trash and when I saw her tell the kids it was time to go. I sprinted towards the front of the park entrance. Stand in front of a car at the front and put my own pair of sunglasses on. I keep them in a fanny pack along with some medical supplies and my phone, so that she wouldn't recognize me and stay on the path. Like how you slow down on the road when passing a police officer. Once her van starts coming up, I'm watching in disbelief as once again she doesn't turn and goes right through the same area again that we had just fixed up this morning. I was upset now, I walk up to her van, this time being in the middle of the pavement, and she stops when I approach, rolling down her window and giving me a pissed look that I stopped her again. M. Oh my god what do you want? Me. Miss, you ran over that area again. We had finished fixing it this morning and you just ran it over. M. So? It's just some ducking grass. You should just make that whole area pavement, so it won't get ran over. Me. You can clearly see that the grass is in front of you when you drive up from the back area. It doesn't come out of nowhere and we've never had anyone run over that area. Only you. I had a frustrated tone in my voice but was still trying to be polite. Her kids in the back were glued to their tablets and weren't paying any mind to me other than when they heard their mom swear. They looked to be around 6 to 8, I think. She gives me one more nasty look before rolling up her window and driving away. Didn't even respond to my last point. Also, she almost ran over my foot since she didn't wait for me to back away from her van before driving off. That was my tipping point. I call my supervisor again and tell him what happened. I could tell he was pretty pissed over the phone but said that he had a plan to stop that area from getting ran over anymore. I meet him on Friday morning and he has this giant boulder in the back of his pickup truck. I instantly knew what we were going to be doing with it. After some work getting it down, digging up the dirt, and wedging it into place, we finished putting the boulder in. I had to admit that it made me sad that there was now this eyesore of a rock there and all our work previously was for nothing, but I was happy the entitled mom wouldn't be running over that area anymore. Later that day, I'm in the back picking up trash when I see the same minivan pull into the parking lot. I know it's the entitled mom and her kids because I remember their license plate this time. I pay no mind to them, know that she couldn't run over the grass again when they leave now. Later on, I was cleaning some bird poop off a statue when I heard a loud crash sound that came from the front. I run over to when it came from, shocked as I see the entitled mother's van with the giant boulder, we put down wedged between her tire and the bumper of her car. She gets out of the van in shock at what happened, swearing and shouting. I personally didn't want to damage her car, just realized she couldn't drive through the grass anymore, so I did feel some guilt at seeing the giant boulder wedged in her car. I came over to the other side to see that the wheel was off the ground slightly and the front bumper wedged atop the boulder. I don't know how she even managed that honestly. She sees me and immediately gets a look of pure concentrated anger. M. You. She starts walking up to me stomping her feet. You put that rock there, didn't you a hole? Me. Miss, my supervisor brought that boulder in this morning for that spot because you were running over the grass. I don't know how you even hit it since again, you can clearly see it coming from the back. M. I was texting my friend you a hole. You're going to pay for this damage. Me. Yeah, I don't think so. She fumes and heads back to her car. She has her two kids get out and go sit at a nearby table, both still playing on their tablets. M though got back in the car and is on the phone. A few minutes later, she tells me she called the police and that I'm going to be arrested for intentionally damaging her property. I admit I was a bit worried at what story she gave them probably wasn't the truth, so I called my supervisor again. He got here even before the police did. I saw him laughing as he pulled up and saw the situation. He walks up to the entitled mom and explains who he is, and she starts yelling at him about how she's going to sue and have him and myself arrested for the damage. A few minutes later the police pull up. She tells them that we intentionally put that rock there to damage her car. But we explained to the officers that she had drove over that grass several times, even after we had fixed it and we put that boulder down to keep her and others from driving through the grass. The police got some more information from us and told the entitled mom that we were in the right to put the boulder down and aren't liable for her poor driving. M frustrated tells her kids to get back in the car and actually starts to back out off the boulder. 
My supervisor, the officers, and I all watch as the boulder is scraping up the bottom of her car as she backs out. Once off it, her front bumper slams on the pavement and is now hanging down off the left side. Something under her car was also touching the pavement, which was apparent as she started to drive away and the sound of something scraping against the road could be heard. The officers stop her and tell her that her car is now not safe to drive on the road and she needs to get it towed. My supervisor and I went home shortly after, smiling and laughing at what had happened that day. I can safely assume now she won't be going over that grass anymore. The last story is titled. Redneck thinks it's funny to yank out mailboxes. My dad makes him pay. TLDR. Guy was pulling out mailboxes with a chain attached to his truck. Dad makes invincible mailbox. Guy goes to federal prison. Disclaimer. This happened a long time ago, but still makes me giggle to this day. So, way back in the day, mid-90s or so, my family lived in a log cabin on 10 acres of land in a rural area 10 minutes or so out of town. It wasn't totally the sticks, but you could definitely hear banjo music in the background sometimes. At the end of our long driveway was one of those roads that was also technically a state highway. In the AM I'd trudge down to wait for the bus, when I got home, I'd grab the mail and carry it back. Until one Monday morning when I went out and noticed the mailbox was gone. On closer inspection looked like it had just been ripped out of the ground. Dad was obviously not pleased. He went to talk with the county sheriff who happened to live a mile down the road. Turns out it had been happening up and down the road for months. Someone was tossing a chain over mailboxes and yanking them out with their vehicle. He suspected a guy down the road with his great big lifted 4WD truck but couldn't prove anything. Usually happened on sat and sun nights with people finding out in the morning. Also seems the nicer the mailbox the bigger a target, and many had been hit multiple times. People had tried digging deeper, using more durable wood, etc. The guy just took it as a challenge and ripped them out again. Soft, sandy ground and his truck was a monster. Well dad said challenge ducking accepted. A bit about my father. He's a steelworker with an engineering background and graduate degree. Built like a bear with forearms the size of my freaking legs. Most people looking at him would never think this monster of a man is also brilliant, but he is. The calm, cool type that never almost never loses his temper. But wrong him and God help you. So, dad goes to Lowe's and buys the fanciest, prettiest mailbox they sell. He then proceeds to install it on top of an 8 feet long cylinder of 3 inches diameter hardened tool steel. But he wasn't done there. After digging down with post holers and dropping it in, he then filled it in with quickset concrete. To really sell it he then used some strips of half inch wood to cover the steel core of his now indestructible mailbox of doom. Primed and painted them so it looked like a standard 4 inches post and even had my mom decorate it with flowers and such he wanted it to be as tempting of a target as possible. Didn't even take a week. I went out for school in the morning and found the mailbox right where it should be. Attached to it was 30 feet of chain and an entire hitch assembly. Ripped right off the truck's frame, sheared the bolts. It was marvelous to behold. Sheriff gets called over dies laughing when he sees it. He went to the house of the guy that was suspected and sure enough verified the damage to his truck matched. Fun fact, ducking with a mailbox is a federal crime. As in you go to federal prison, not those cushy state places. Dad was unofficially rewarded by the sheriff's department with a few cases of beer and some venison. And after that every deputy in town would flash him a thumbs up whenever they saw him. Edit. Apparently vandalism to mailboxes is far more common than I thought, and other people have taken similar measures. I guess great minds think alike. Edit 2. As many have commented apparently federal prison is actually a lot better than state. Didn't know that, sorry. Thanks for listening.